Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between position and profile and how we can apply those to a round cylindrical shaft. So this would be excerpts from my Geotal Fundamentals program where we explain what the differences is, are between position and profile. That'll be in Unit 13. But also we're going to take an example from my advanced program, the mixer assembly in Unit 15. Both of those are linked in the description below. So first let's do a quick summary of what the difference is between a position and a profile. We have a simple example here with a shaft. We have the larger diameter identified as A. That creates a datum axis. And we want to make sure these are centered on that. So we had a couple of options here, profile and position. We're going to leave run out of the conversation for this one. So let's start with position tolerance first. Quick summary, it creates a cylindrical tolerance zone, diameter 0.3, that extends the length of the feature. And now the axis of that feature has to lie within this cylindrical tolerance zone. It could be 0.15 off the center this way, that way, in, out, and also tilted. Always with position tolerance, you need a size tolerance, how big and small that shaft is, and then position will control how much it can be off the center. So remember those variations, size, form, orientation, location that can happen on your feature? Well, size tolerance, we know, controls size and form. That's through rule number one, size controls form. Then position is it going to control the orientation and coaxiality, location of the axis. Position controls the axis. Now profile is a little different. It controls the surface directly. We use a basic dimension for the diameter and we let the profile tolerance apply around the surface of the feature. So that profile tolerance is actually controlling everything. You're controlling the size, the form, the orientation, and the location all in one shot. So that's really the question of which symbol do you want to use here? Do you want a separate size and then a separate location? Or do you want to just group it all and just say profile that surface relative to my data? Now what I found is the best way to explain geometric tolerancing is using concrete examples. So like I said, this is an example mixer assembly for my Geotal applications and tolerance stacks. It's in my book, page 15.2. It's also in the online video program as well. So we have our main shaft here in blue that has two bearings cinched down onto it. So we put this lower bearing over the top, and it seats on this bottom shoulder right here and fits very tightly on this lower diameter. There's a bearing spacer that doesn't have to be very coaxial. The only important thing is the spacer spaces the bearings up and down properly. This bearing is going to be fitting on this tight-fitting journal. To cinch everything down, they have this threaded piece here where a lock nut can cinch it all down. Not really that important, that's coaxial. This whole shaft and bearing assembly is going to be fit into a main housing in purple. And then we have an adapter and electric motor that mount on top. The electric motor is attached with a coupling, so when we turn on the electric motor, it should attach to the coupling and spin our shaft. The shaft has a propeller mounted on the bottom, and the propeller is going to be mixing some fluid in a big drum. We want to make sure that none of the fluid gets up into our bearings, so you have a dynamic seal that's really critical on these diameters right here. So what I've done is just pulled our shaft out of the assembly here, and we're just going to go diameter by diameter and talk about which one we use a position and which one we use just a standard profile tolerance. So first thing we always need in a tolerancing scheme is datum features. What would you set up as the datum features on this part? Now remember, it's going to be our leader. How do we want to set the attitude we want to control all of our features relative to? Bearings make a lot of sense here, right? Bearings would be really good leaders that you want to control the rest of the part to. That's how it connects into the mating housing as well. So do we want to pick just one diameter? Yeah, it's not very stable. This one diameter, not very stable. It's very short. So we can use a trick by using two diameters at the same time called A-B. dash We're going to identify this one as A. We're going to identify the other bearing journal as B. Then we're going to use the notation A-B dash when we refer to them in the feature control frames. That creates a very strong functional datum axis that we want to control all of our features to. And the idea there is you want to control how the coupling is to your bearings, how the propeller is to your bearings, how the seal is to your bearings, everything related to the bearings. So the bearings are a leader, A-B. Secondary, what controls this shaft up and down? Well, that's going to be this shoulder right here I talked about. This face is where the main bearing is going to shoulder up to, and that's where it's going to set our attitude in the up-down direction. All right, so really good A-B-C a on this. Clocking didn't really matter on this one, so we left the tertiary D off on this one. All you need is just an A-B-C. All right, so now let's talk about the different diameters and how we want to control them. Now remember, the two options are a size tolerance and then a position, or just keep everything basic and go with profile. So anytime you need a fit 
for something? Does it fit into something else? And you need a tight size ton to control that fit. Then separately, we're going to control how coaxial it is. Now, if you want to control both of those at the same time, like fit and coaxiality are equally important, then maybe just a good old profile tons would handle everything all at once. So let's look at this first example. This is the one that fits into the coupling. And I just said a word there, fit, and all of a sudden you say, well, you probably need a tight size tons for how it fits in, and then how coaxial it is is less important. It's a flexible coupling, so it can handle a little bit of misalignment be okay. So that would be a good one for a plus minus and throw a position on it. This surface doesn't mount to anything, so it doesn't have to fit. Kind of profile would be a good way to handle all of that at once. The next example we have is a threaded feature. Now a threaded feature is kind of like this fit thing. You know, you have a certain thread spec to make sure that it threads on there properly. That's the fit. Remember, it doesn't really have to be that coaxial, and it'll be just fine. So that's a really good one for a thread spec. And then you'll have a position to keep it centered. Now our tight fitting bearing right there, oh, those bearings, they have a real tight size tolerance to make sure they fit properly and you want them coaxial too. I think that's a good one for a tight plus or minus and keep them coaxial as well. This diameter right here, not really important, not anything tight fit requirement, just a clearance really so that we could put a profile tolerance on that one. Next diameter down, this is again our datum feature A, that's how it fits into that bearing. Again, a really good one for a plus or minus and a position tolerance. So now we're going to come to this diameter. What does that mount to? Well, it, it just has to fit through this hole here. It's just clearance in the green part. We don't want it to get too big where it won't fit in the hole, and we don't want it to get too small where the O-ring is going to want to pop or squeeze out of that. So that seems like a really good one for a profile tons. Just don't come too far out, don't come too far in. I care about the size just as much as I care about the coaxial. That's a really good one for a profile. Then we have a seal diameter. Ooh, seals are really good for profile taunts because you care about the size of that diameter and you care about the shift of the diameter. Both of those things affect the squeeze on the dynamic seal. How big it is, how small it is affects the squeeze, and if it's off the center, it loads up on one side, not the other. So controlling both the size and the coaxiality at the same time could be a very good move there. This diameter is very similar to the other diameter. Just don't get too close where it rubs and don't get too far away where the O-ring pops off. So you care about size and the coaxiality the same. To me, that's a good one for a profile. This one, not important. Throw a big profile tolerance on it. And the last one, well, that's going to be for it fits into the propeller. So you're going to have probably a plus or minus for a fit. And then how centered is, you know, if I vibration issues or other things, that might be a different issue. We'll throw a position on that. So just running through a couple of those examples, like when do we use profile? When do we use size and position. Well, it's anytime you have a fit with something else, that's what plus and minus is great for. Size, MMC, LMC, and then you have the coaxiality separate issue. Profile is just like, ah, I care about everything the same. Either I care about everything, tight profile, I don't care about anything, loose profile. So let's look at the official drawing for this one. And notice that we picked those datum features as those tight size tolerances there where it fits into the bearing. And we wanted those very coaxial so that the bearings run right to each other. It's so got those on A and B. Then anytime you have a fit, you put a size tolerance and then a position. So that's where it fits on the propeller. Where it fits into the coupling, that's a size and a position. We have thread spec. So UNF 2A there. Make sure that stays centered somewhat, position within five. And profile. Profile is really good for those diameters that just don't get too close, don't get too far away. You care about gap or clearance. Really good one for there for profile. Also, that seal diameter for the O-ring, that's really great for a profile tons too. We're going to keep that 898 basic, and we apply a profile tons to the surface. Don't get too big where it squeezes too much. Don't get too small where it squeezes too little. And because that's applying all the way around our shaft, you're controlling both the size and the coaxiality in the same shot. So we use profile tons when you care about everything, size, form, orientation, location. We use profile when we care about nothing, size, form, orientation, location. So when you care, one. If you don't care, 20. And the 20 probably means don't measure it, right? I mean, I don't care about it. Plus or minus 20 on these parts is not important. Oh, and that's another thing to keep in mind there. When we apply profile tons to a diameter, and we say profile within 20 on that diameter surface, remember the tolerance zone looks like this, 20 thou? Now people say that's plus or minus 10. Yes, per side though. Be careful, that plus or minus 10 is going to wrap around 
and it's going to control you both sides. It actually allows that diameter to be as big as plus or minus 20. So be real careful when you apply a profile tolerance on a diameter because it gets you twice. And that's going to be different than when you put a profile tolerance on this surface. This is a planar surface relative to a datum. So that's like doing a plus or minus 10 because you have a total zone of 20 plus 10 minus 10. So profile tolerance is great for surfaces that are planar, curved, and even round cylindrical features as well. And look at our major symbols we use on shafts, position and profile. Run out, yeah, they have their uses, seal diameters, pulleys and things, maybe you can use run out, but I really see them as position and profile. Position and profile are always our one-two punches for tackling the tolerances on our parts. Well, hopefully this video helped, and if you want more of these applications, please look at our advanced program, the Geotile Applications and Tolerance Stacks, linked in the description below. And for fundamental concepts, just understanding what the symbols mean, look at our Geotile Pro Fundamentals course, also linked in the description below. And once again, thanks for the likes and subscribes.